Hello again. This is Kate Brown Pernia for Why Not a Hat. Today we're going to talk about buckram forms. The reason is a lot of different styles can be created on buckram forms and if you know how to put them together you can make some fanciful things like this little holiday hat that I have on or various other things. So um, we will talk about a number of different styles. First of all, I think um, one of you requested that I do a tutorial on how to do a wire leaf fascinator. Well, I did such a tutorial last week, but I realized the request came in before I did that tutorial, and since I'd never shown a picture of what I was about to do, I suspect the commenter really wanted something else. Perhaps this little hat, which I've shown in a couple of my videos. Well, this hat is not built on a wire form, it's built on a buckram base. So that's why we're going to get to work today on buckram bases. Let me show you the inside. You see, two bands of buckram covered with silk, and then the leaves are put on top. So let's get the camera focused on the work table, and I'll show you how it's done. In the shirring video, when, we sh when I showed you this little hat, we did a form to base the shirring on, which was made of buckram and wired around the edges and covered with French elastic. So I've already covered that. We, fold, we formed it on a head block to give it the curve you wanted. So for this little 50s leaf bandeau, we're going to do a similar technique. I have taken a head block and stretched a piece of bias cut buckram over the plastic covered block, steamed it. Now I've got a paper pattern that is 11 inches by one inch. We're going to make the pattern for the bands for this little hat. It's a little tricky drawing on buckram, but with this one piece of bias buckram, I have enough here to make two of these one inch bands. I'm only going to do one today. So this is the beginning. This is the beginning of the bandeau that you see in this hat. What we will do is cut this out, wire the edges, and cover with French elastic, and then position them, two of them, to, to form this little bandeau, and then you have a base to go with, wherever you want to go. So let's move on to something else. Let's talk about the little hat that I was wearing at the opening of this video. This was a little inspiration for the holidays. I got the idea to <clears throat> do a little hat that looks like a wrapped package for Christmas. <clears throat> I got the little um, box made and then I decided instead of using ribbon to decorate the hat, which would obscure this beautiful fabric, I used netting instead to make a bow. But look at the inside of this hat. This too is a buckram form. It's a square form and the way I came about this is I, I tried a few things. I took some heavy craft paper and tried out some shapes to see what would look best on my head. And I ended up, this one was just a little too tall and too small, so I ended up with this one which measures three and a half inches across each of each part of the square. The entire piece is 15 inches because you have to have an inch overlap and then an inch and a half tall. So this is what I used to cut out my buckram and make the hat. 
And then of course, a three and a half inch square. I used two layers of buckram, one cut on the straight, one cut on the bias and steamed with a steam iron to make it nice and stiff, wired it, used the French elastic to cover the wire. And then I could sew it together through the French elastic and make my little box. Then it was just a matter of covering the box with a fabric and decorating it. Now this is not lined I want because I wanted to show you the inside first, but I made a little silk lining that's going to go into the hat. Let's see, where's the back of it? Right here. This is gonna go right inside and stitched around to finish the hat. Now I fooled around with the idea of putting this on a fascinator headband, but I found because of the unusual square shape, it didn't sit all that well on the wired headband. But if you want to do a headband, you can take a look at my wire to fascinator video to learn how to make this. But instead, I used a hat elastic, which makes it fit snugly on my head. So that's one kind of buckram form. And we did this one you've seen before, but this is also a buckram form hat, but that's a little more complicated. Now, let's talk about this little holiday halo hat. This is a style that's become much more popular since the Duchess of Su Sussex, I think it is, Kate Middleton, wore one for one of her children's christening, and it's a very popular style now. Most of them are made on headbands, but mine is based on a 19... 40s movie that I saw starring Barbara Stanwyck and I loved I love the shape of the hat that she was wearing hers had a snood on the back to hold her 40s hairdo but anyway I designed a pattern for this and I'm going to show you how that works so here is a buckram form in progress for that style of hat now I've got it partially done just to save you some time I'm going to show you the pattern in just a minute, but I wanted to show you, you've seen this before, but I'm going to review it. You sew, this is the number 19 millinery wire. On the little box, I used 21, which is lighter, but this is a, a form that needs a little more substantial strength in the shape. So I use number 19, which you can get from Judith M or any other millinery supplier. I'm using a buttonhole stitch to secure that wire right to the edge of the buckram. You work all the way around, top and bottom. Oops, I'm always having to thread my needle, it seems. I'm gonna knot this off just to save us some time. When you're finished with the wiring part, you cover with the French elastic, which comes in a roll like this. And this is just a piece of one inch crinoline that you fold in half lengthwise. Do a little tug as you pull it over the wire to get a nice snug fit. And as you can see, it covers it very nicely. And you just use a running basting stitch to cover. That gives you something to sew the fabric that's going to go on the outside of the hat to later on. So anyway, that's the form. Very different from the other forms that you've seen, but still the same technique. Now, just so you can have an idea of how this pattern is, I've traced my grid from my cutting mat onto a piece of white paper in the hopes that it will be easier for you to see what it looks like. Now this, This is the pattern. Now this is a half of the halo. The actual pattern opens out like this. But to save paper and save time, I did it on the fold. So the, the center front of the hat is three inches tall and I've done it on this one inch grid so that if you can, if you can look at this, you can maybe replicate it. It's a 10 by 10 square and the, the back it's a one inch overlap for the seam allowance. It goes like this. And so that's how you cut out this form. Now this is just for the buckram form. 
And in order to cover it with this holiday fabric, you're going to have to add seam allowance. And I would add half to three quarters of an inch because you're working around a curve, you want to be sure to have plenty. You can always cut off the extra, but um, if you don't have enough, then you're stuck and you have to start all over again. So basically, that's how you get started making holiday hats with buckram. So let's get started. The holidays are coming. Why not a hat? 